This is bathguide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos, and today we're going to take a look at parametric equations. So we're going to create a table of values, uh, and we're going to create the table of values defined by these functions. So you should know already something about functions and how to evaluate them. Uh, so what we're going to do is create a table of values where these are the values for time and we're going to use these functions to, def to uh, come up with values for x and y to fill the table. So use these values of t within these equations to create a table of values. Okay, I'm going to give you a chance to try this to come up with the x and y values that correspond to these t values and then we'll come back after we pause the video and check. we'll check your answers. Okay, now that you've had a chance to try the answers, let's go through and discuss how to calculate them. Well, you should know that scientists often uh, calculate the path of a projectile using different functions. Sometimes they use a function for the height, which is governed by gravity, and then they use some other function for horizontal movement because they are different in terms of gravity. All right, nevertheless, let's go, go through. So for the first value, we're going to put in 0 for x. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to calculate the x values first. So I'm going to put 15 times 0, which is 0. OK, so then we're going to take 15 times 1 is the next t value, which is 15. Then we're going to do 15 times 2, which is 30. OK, then we're going to do 15 times 3. And of course, you can see that each of these values is increasing by 15. OK, it's going to get a little harder now because we're breaking the pattern. We're putting 15 times 10, which is 150. So we're putting them along the way kind of cut over between 3, we jumped ahead to 10. All right, now if we do, do the same thing for 12.4, I'm not going to show the work, but we should get 186. Okay, all right, now let's do the same thing for the y values. Now this takes a little bit more work to do because we're going to put in a negative 16 times our first t value, plus 200. Okay, use a calculator, and I used one earlier to calculate this. It comes out to be zero. I'm looking at the next value. So when I plug in one, you plug this into a calculator, that's where I get 184. Okay, likewise, do the same thing for two. You put two in, and again, I would just plug this into a calculator, and you get 336. Okay, likewise, we'll do this again for 3, negative 16 times 3 squared. Plug it into a calculator, and we get 456. So it's still steadily rising. The projectile is going up. Now let's see what happens when we plug in 10. So if you plug in 10, 200 times 10. If you plug this into a calculator, I'm getting 400. So now it looks like the projectile definitely has maxed out somewhere between 3 and 10, and now it's on the way back down. All right, likewise, we'll do the same thing with 12.4, and I'm getting 19.8 approximately. And you can see that it is heading down back to Earth, and it's soon going to be hitting uh, ground level. Okay, so that's how we calculate values, a uh, table of values using what's called parametric equations, where the x and y are dependent on another a uh, variable called t. t is usually used for time. All right, make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our other videos and our interactive quizzes. Take care.